In coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. Travis Wayne Good's home. <coughs> now do you understand what Nelson meant by in the coming days? He uh, deceived all of you, fooled you, did a shell game. I saw on Newsweek this morning that conservative Christians are now drooling with the church's amended Respect for Religious Freedom Act that was signed into law yesterday. Because they now see the path to utterly destroying gay marriage. The church has never been for gay marriage. They've been the biggest opponents of gay marriage. Everybody should have been concerned when uh, Nelson had the amended clause put in that it was intended to sabotage the Respect for Marriage Act. And Congress, the President, let it happen. In fact, the manner in which it was approved was because of just that, that uh, they were able to get Mitt Romney to uh, fellowship uh, specific congresspersons, uh, Senema being one of them, as uh, she's known to be uh, opposed to all things Democrat Party, and yet the Democrat Party still had her in, and they should have kicked her out long ago. She has no interest in voting Democrat. But nonetheless, there's the church showing their true colors. With Elder Gerard, Gerard from the 70, with a former senator who was Mormon. They were there taking a photo op with her. Why? Because the church compromised her. You know, you'd think it would be with Senator Romney, who fellowshipped her, but nope. And so, yes, I've been able to show you over the course of time how the church has been leading up to this moment. And is uh, going to take away gay rights. You've got the Supreme Court in position. And... Uh, it's sad because uh, the liberal press is the deep state Dems are still deceiving their followers into thinking that this is a happy time that everything's all fixed now and uh, even some high-profile uh, people who are married are uh, being used as poster children for how great this was and you, you don't get it see the the government people in the GOP are very dumb very ignorant very hateful and they're perfect as pawns to be used from the big corporations who use dark money to uh, bribe these politicians to side with them and uh, it, it, it's the church that's a big part of this dark money as I exposed their plot after being shut down before conference that one year and I think it was 2021 last year I then uh, I found the news talking about the little black book and so I did research on the little black book and found yeah the Skousens 
They're a part of that little secret combination seeking to overthrow America with putting in federal judges and, and uh, changing the Constitution to become Christian. And uh, so that was the video that I was able to test to see if I can come back. And uh, I just, I'm really concerned because there's no reason for the church to hate people. They've got their own church. They should just leave other people alone. If they don't want to join the church, they don't want to join the church. Just leave them alone. And they can't. They won't. They keep pushing and forcing agency. You must let us control your agency or you're denying our religious freedom. And they control the government to get away with it. And, uh, and so here's a, a projection of hate that the church leaders and the church itself, the Mormon church itself, taught a Mormon named David Bollard. He replied to my video, what harm is there in giving LDS church religious freedom? And I, I think I did a, a pre thing about what the church has abused me with right there at the beginning. But uh, he then tells me in his comment of hate, I'm sure the Lord would have you spend your time lifting people up rather than tearing them down. Just a suggestion. Yeah, it's a hate comment. Because he's not getting it. I'm not the aggressor. The church drew first blood, January 2nd, 1998. I was Mormon, born and raised, believed the church's lies, had sung the primary hymn. If by chance you meet a frown, do not let it stay. Quickly force them to obey and smile away the frown. And uh, we get taught to be abusive. And I, when I was attacked by my own church for doing what they taught me to do, it, it's, it's them tearing me down rather than lifting me up. The church didn't lift me up. The church <laughs> tore me down. And so again, David Bollard is projecting. He's tearing me down rather than lifting me up. Ta-da! Beam and moat. How true it is. So again, you have to be very, very careful when you attack someone and criticize them because you're going to expose yourself for whatever comment you put in. Tried and true, proven scripture from the Bible, even. It's the word of God as far as it is translated correctly, and it's translated correctly because it's come to pass when tested. And so, yeah, I just. We have some more things that they're plotting that are coming up soon, but. Uh, uh, the news we article they the religious conservatives were quoting Mike Lee or referring to Mike Lee with his attempted amendment and uh, uh, they see how the church has opened up that path to destroy gay marriage and everybody knows Mormonism is about agency, right? Three kingdoms of glory, you get to choose, the church doesn't tell you what to do with your life, right? And yet that's not the way it is in practice. 
Instead, the way it is in practice is Lucifer's plan of happiness. It's blatantly obvious, everybody knows it, and we're supposed to tear that down. You know, am I supposed to have history teachers talking about World War II? Oh, we need to lift up Hitler, not tear him down. No, you better damn well tear him down. You need to teach the rising generation of kids not to repeat history, not to allow the repetition of history. You teach them the importance of their vote so that we do not put in a president who will be anti-Semite, who will want to take away rights of other people, to hold them in bondage, to abuse and destroy. And you went and did it anyway. Because, I don't know, you forgot? You didn't watch Schindler's List? You understood Schindler's List wrong? But yeah, the church is, is revealing itself. The more they are getting involved, the more they expose themselves. And it should scare Mormons. It should cause them to say, Oh my God, I am in the Great and Abominable Church, just as the Book of Mormon told me. And they should leave. By staying in the church, you are supporting their agenda. Their agenda of hate. They are cooing America. It is now confirmed. They used this Respect for Marriage Act to coup America. Because it's, they claim, their own words from the first presidency statement. Let's bring that up for you. Statement on signing of the U.S. The U.S. The U.S. Respect for Marriage Act. We extend a heartfelt thank you and our congratulations to all who played a part in the passage of the amended Respect for Marriage Act. Their efforts to protect religious freedom. Really, was that what it was all about? Was that the focus of the Respect for Marriage Act was religious freedom? No. To see the church's focus, they had no respect for marriage. It was all about tearing down LGBTQ. It was about tearing down the respect for marriage and forcing people to conform and comply to their approved marriage. And see, the amended Respect for Marriage Act specifically recognizes that diverse beliefs about the role of gender in marriage are held by reasonable and sincere people based on decent and honorable religious or philosophical premises. <laughs> the church punked the government and in so doing <coughs> punked the nation. Because the church had this intention all along when they put it in. They have no interest in adhering and respecting gay marriage. As restated last month, the doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints related to marriage between a man and a woman is well known and will remain unchanged. Respect for marriage? Nope. See, the church has it already set up. I go out on my 19-year-old mission, which is now 18, hasn't changed back yet, and I find a gay couple, Kelvin. I found Kelvin on my mission. He was in our investigator records. We went and followed up with him. We wanted to find out what flaming meant by the previous missionaries. <coughs> we found out. And so, what do we do? Oh no, do we teach them? Well no, we have to say, I'm sorry. 
your uh, marital relationship, your partnership, because it wasn't allowed back then, is uh, a violation of our church's standards. You're going to have to separate from each other and, uh, uh, you know, just like we tell regular couples, we go in, we find couples living together, a man and a woman living together, say, I'm sorry, you're going to have to find a separate place to live if you want to become a member of our church, and then you have to, or either get married, civilly. And then a year later, after your baptism, you can get sealed in the temple, because Nelson hadn't made the change, obviously. And, uh, and so other questions. Well, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to drink or smoke or do drugs or, or coffee or tea. You know, you have to pay tithing. There are certain requirements in order to become Mormon. It's not a threat to Mormonism. It's just a simple matter of, oh, okay, you're gay, you made your choice, all right, have a good day. I'll come to your story time to the children, I'll check it out, see how it is. You can show respect for that. You don't need to go in with AK-47s to break it up and scare the children half to death who are wanting to hear a story time. And dear God, how hard is this to love? It's just unbelievable the hatred that is going on. The people refuse to allow other people to live the life that they want to live. They're not taking away your rights. Your right to life, liberty, and property. You are taking away theirs. And you are projecting it by claiming the fear-mongering that they're coming to get you. The gay agenda is coming to take away your rights. No! And so, yeah, there's a lot of problems, a lot of confusion, and it's going to destroy this nation. And thanks to the church, it's well underway.